Look at this, the ground clearance of this thing is absolutely nuts. You can do anything in this car. Welcome back, I'm Tadward, and today we're driving an AMC Eagle. This is a 1987 end of the run, one of 454 sedans made. And yeah, she's not a looker, but she gets the job done. And the first thing you notice, it's four wheel drive. It basically looks like a pickup truck when you get under this thing. They made these as a sedan and as a wagon. The wagon sold a hell of a lot better than these. But this was the end of AMC, really. And the consumer market spoke. They said, this is not for us. And they basically got absorbed by Chrysler. This one has a 4.2 liter straight six. I don't know how much power it makes. It doesn't really matter. But this one's in beautiful condition. And my buddy Ed over here from EAS in Waltham, Massachusetts said, hey, it's snowy. We got a four wheel drive Eagle. Let's go take it for a ride. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. Gonna do an extra toe tap on this today. Yikes. Does this have power seats? Oh my God, yeah, it has power, power seats. seats. Oh, yeah. Come on. Yeah. That's luxury. Immediately the seating position's wild. I've got this very long steering column coming up and almost in an Italian fashion, but opposite, my feet are offset to the left instead of to the right. <laughs> this one has the three speed and you could get it as a five speed manual, but we've got the select drive, four wheel drive system, which can be changed on the fly. You can go from two wheel drive to four wheel drive as you're driving it. You'll notice the speedometer is non-functional. That's just because that cable is out for repair. And we've got some traffic behind us in an actual modern 4x4 vehicle, a <laughs> Ford Explorer. He's not having as much fun as we are. This, this 4.2 liter has dual Weber carbs. They're tuned pretty well now, actually. I think in the, in the what did it come with? It came with some kind of uh, injection system? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, and I'm sure that was a nightmare, or at least hard to repair going forward. This one's got like 90,000 miles on it, no rust. I mean, who, who maintains this? Who, who, who looks at this car and says, yep, that's, that's the one. That's the one I'm keeping forever. <laughs> Heading up this way? Yep. Yeah. All right. Oh, what a beautiful day for an Eagle. I mean, who knows what these tires are, but they're doing the job. <laughs> Have an all wheel drive, or I shouldn't say that. It's not all wheel drive, it is four wheel drive. Let's see what these brakes feel like. Pretty good. They're not bad. There's a lot of pedal travel, but you know, the, the motion is positive. Talk about light steering, man. Wow. It's the days of over power steering. All right, do we dare? Yeah, why not? Let's do it. We took some photos up here on this private road earlier just because it looked good. Some lady in a in a new Land Rover was looking at us like we were nuts. Look at this, the ground clearance of this thing is absolutely nuts. You can do anything in this car. You don't want to gather too much speed on this slippery road though just because, you know, yes, we have the ability to gain traction, but we don't necessarily have the ability to turn it if things go south. Imagine seeing this drive up to your private road in your wealthy town of Massachusetts in your driveway. They've, they're coming for us. What made you buy this one? Uh, it was funny. I, I bought it for Radwood because I wanted a Radwood car. This was kind of a really good fit for Radwood. Uh, but then when I got in it, I realized it smelled exactly like my grandfather's car. And he had one exactly like this. And I think that was somewhere in the back of my psyche too. That one that my grandfather had. It smells like, I mean, it's it's period correct as far as its odor, that's for sure. Yeah. It reminds me a little bit of my mom's Oldsmobile, even though I know that's a GM vehicle, but you've still got the, the two keys on the column. And it's, you know, American cars back then, I think were very similar. You get in all of them, they pretty much feel the same. Yeah. You know, yeah. it, it's not like today where it's, it's obvious, oh, this is the user interface of a GM versus a Ford. That's the wrong ding. Everything was a buzz, and it basically had the same yeah, look to it. Same look to the gauges, same, yeah. look, same feel to the gauges. I mean, if it was an Oldsmobile or a Buick, you'd have that long speedometer, just that big strip, yeah. but, I mean. The only thing about these cars is that they were way ahead of their time. They were they were forward thinking in the fact that people wanted four-wheel drive sedans. Well, I look at this. dominate the market now. Not only that, I mean, it looks goofy because it's so jacked up, but, I mean, Subaru makes this. Yeah. Subaru makes this That's car. Yeah. All right, let's. So I can just push this to two wheel drive? Yeah, you're in. Yep. Yeah. Uh -oh. 
it's weird because I'm not positive anything happened, but I'm pretty sure it did. <laughs> yeah. That's basically what modern cars do now. They just do it automatically. They switch, you know, like a Mercedes Sportmatic automatically just switches to four wheel drive. But if it's not slipping, it reverts to a two wheel drive. Yeah. So it's, What's weird is this is like a, a manual pick step involved in it. Yeah, this is like a pickup truck. I mean, yeah, yeah. And, but you don't even have to, I mean, this is easier than a pickup truck. All yeah. the pickup trucks I remember from this era, you'd end up having to go out and turn the little guys on the axle. For some strange reason, they put the hood opening right underneath it to the right of the steering wheel, which makes, I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's apparent at least. I don't have to look for it. What's really strange too is that this is 1987. It feels like it's 1970s. This it car really does. really does feel dated. And, but at the same time, so does my 911. You have a you have a 911 similar to mine. Correct. Uh, you have a 3.2 Carrera, and you've got a 930. You got one up on me there. But um, you know, my 911 is 1988. This is 1987. This could have been the two car solution, <laughs> where my 911 is my yeah. fun weekender, and this, this is the family driver. hauler. Come this on. Is, this is your modern daily driver. Now we can listen to this motor just a little bit. Come on, oh, three speed. On it's that transmission. All right, let's see. We'll, we'll give me a second gear. There it is. There it is. Nice long gearing. Hit me in third. <laughs> a little jump into third. That's pretty funny, man. You know, it's funny. The, the, these brakes are fantastic. This is actually, it brakes in a nice straight line. I was expecting this to be a lot more terrifying than it is. The only thing about cars from this era, especially American cars, is they equated luxury with lightness. Yeah. And this steering is so, like, I feel like I could flick it. You do it with a finger. Yeah, it, it's so bizarre. Overpower steering. It's absolutely nuts. But, you know, I, I do find the charm in it. It's definitely, like, lovely to drive. Yeah, if you look underneath this car, it's very much like a 70s car. There's not much change, you know, other than the, you know, the, the uh, transfer case on the fly and some of the technology that they put in it. Other than that, it really is no different than the, probably the 79 and 80 and 81. And oh, yeah. Right that guy looked like he used to own one of these. That's... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, definitely. And this one, so this one, uh, this engine was in the Jeep Cherokee as well, right? Correct. Yeah, so this got around. This is bulletproof. I mean, you're not gonna, you're not gonna break this, but, oh wow, this is fun. There's less body roll than I would have anticipated, although I'm not really pushing it because we can't. We'll probably slide off the road and die, and I, you know, I'd like to preserve this strange piece of history, but as, for as tall as it is, it does a pretty good job not feeling like we're this high. In fact, when I get out of the car and look at it, I'm shocked every time because I can't believe how jacked up it is. But when you're driving it, it doesn't really feel that way. It feels a little more normal. The ride quality too, it's actually reasonable. I think I expected it to feel a little more like a pickup truck. I mean, it's certainly, you know, solid axles and all this nutty stuff, but I mean, compared to the cars at the time, what were you going to be driving? A Caprice? Or if you had real money, a Continental? Yeah. I mean, the Continental yeah, would have been a lot cushier. Yeah. But the yeah. Caprice, those things were just dragging ass. I had a neighbor with a Caprice wagon, and we had a steep driveway. Every time they'd go up the driveway, they'd scrape the ass because the, 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 the <laughs> there was like three feet of car after the axle. Yeah. Maybe AMC was onto something. <laughs> I guess no one else was paying attention. We, <laughs> nobody with a nobody with a checkbook uh, was looking. You know what? This is my first AMC. Is it really? I've never driven an AMC before. Nice. Even in the '90s, when these were like used cars, this this freaked me out. I was like, oh, we don't, you know, like I said, don't make eye contact with that guy. We don't we don't want to run into that guy. It was a weird. I mean, you had to have been. I don't know either. So objectively practical that you bought one of these as a sedan or a wagon like or you lived up in vermont and you got sick of getting stuck in you know your rear wheel drive 70s car or you just couldn't deal with the junky front wheel drive cars that america would, uh yeah, other americans were putting out my grandfather bought one because he wanted the four-wheel drive he lived in upstate new york yeah and he wanted the four-wheel drive 
And he didn't want a wagon. He had to buy this in Hamburg. I mean, this this very well could have been an appropriate car for The Shining. You know, they, they would have just gotten out. Yeah. There would be no movie. They would have just driven out. No need for that, uh, what was that thing? What the Snowcat. The snow yeah. yeah the snow we could have we could have saved a few lives if we <laughs> had an AMC Eagle. Catman Struthers would have been there a little earlier. <laughs> Oh man, if I could get the rights to that music and the intro, that is exactly how I imagine this car pulling up to my house. For a car with power seats, I have roll down windows. It's like an, it's kind of a hodgepodge of like primitive stuff and actual cool technology. And that, and unfortunately that's what everybody thinks of when they think of an AMC. They just think of the Gremlin, but they were so much more than that. And this thing is just a hoot. Well, Ed, Thank you for the opportunity to drive a very strange bird. Literally, it's an eagle. Uh, I mean, you know what? Let's do a lap around because I think people got to see what you have here. You have the strangest shop around because most of the time when you pull into a place like this, you're going to look around this yard and you're just going to see junk. Old American cars destroyed. I pull into your shop and I see... S-Classes, CLs, AMGs, SLs, everything from the 1970s to today. It's like it's like a pop radio station, but for Mercedes. It's just an eclectic mix of all the greatest hits. I, I, like this 850 over here. You have the coolest clients and you have the coolest cars because, my God, you are not afraid to raise your little plaque at an auction and it shows <laughs> when I drive around here. This is nuts. So, thanks again, man. This is this is great. Thank you guys for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Don't forget to respect the drive, whether you're driving a, a brutal AMG or an AMC Eagle. We'll see you in the next one. Oh, what a ding. Let's see. Yeah, we'll get this out. There we go. Oh, and I got my lights on. Yeah, lights on. Uh, top. Ha, ha, ha.